All right, so here's the uh, solution I've come up with for getting this nut plate uh, positioned and drilled for this end rib on the flap. So I don't know if I said it before, but you'll, if you haven't already noticed that a lot of times as you're building your airplane, solutions just kind of present themselves. And that's what happened here. So you've got to have the nut plate positioned you've already got the hole drilled in both of these plates so I just went ahead and re this plate to this rib and using a short uh, quarter 28 bolt with some washers I was able to grab the nut plate and tighten it now the the washers are there so that the bolt doesn't start to fully engage the nut plate it's on here, it's threaded just enough that I can tighten it, but it's not fully engaging the nut plate, so it's, it's not, um, the locking capability of the nut plate is not engaged, so to speak, if that makes sense. Make sure I'm still in frame here, okay. So the other thing that you wanna be sure of when you tighten down your bolts to hold the nut plate in place, you want these ears to be parallel to the flange here. So you don't want the nut plate swiveled around. You want these, basically the center line of the holes on the ears parallel to this flange. And if you're a fanatic like I am, you can actually take a measurement from the center line of the hole to this interface just to get a ballpark figure that yes, it, it is parallel. So that's what I've done. It's tight. It's held in place. Now as always I'm going to go back to my drill bit and I'm going to make a mark on the rib. The other nice thing about doing it this way is you're not putting any real side load on anything so there's you're, you don't run the risk of if, if I had this in my drill and I was holding a big drill on here, there would be a possibility that if something were to walk, this would twist. Doing it by hand this way, you really don't run the risk of doing that. So that's it. So there are my two marks, as always. So now, of course, I'll take the nut plate off. I'll unclico everything. I'll take this plate off. That will leave me this bare rib. And on the drill press, I'll go ahead and I'll drill both of these uh, to the appropriate size. Then I'm, I believe I will come back, Clico everything together, and then, um, well, let me get to that point and then I'll explain it. Let me do this first and I'll be right back. I'm going to reiterate uh, the process that I used to drill these holes just in case you've not seen uh, some of my other videos where I've talked about my process. So here's the, uh, the rib and it's got the little indications here that we just did by spinning the drill bit. So now I'm going to use a really super small drill bit. I don't remember what size this is, but it is quite tiny. And what this will do, this will find those little indications that I just made. The other thing that I like to do is I have this um, center punch, it's adjustable. You can spin the end of it to adjust the tension when it snaps to make the, uh, the center punch. For this thin aluminum, I loosen this up quite a bit. And I'll just go ahead and center punch the marks that I had made just so this little tiny drill bit will find that really easily. And I've got my, uh, my magnifying glasses on so I can make sure I get it in the right location. I'm going to use hearing protection. I've got the drill press set up on a, the highest speed that it will spin because this is nice and thin and it's soft. Uh, and I'm going to drill those holes. see my 
table is not high enough. So let me adjust that. Put this back together, make sure that it's still in frame somewhat. Let's see. Yeah, good enough. <clears throat> All right, so now I can drill these holes. And I always like to clean up my mess as I go. So now those holes are exactly where they need to be and now I will go up to the uh, full size number 40 So now those are drilled and uh, they're the appropriate size. I'll go ahead and deburr them because I'm going to have that other plate laying on here and I want that to lay nice and flat. So I'll deburr these holes, go back over and clico it all together and then transfer these holes to that thicker plate, which I'll show next. Back at the bench, I have the assembly put back together. And again, like I've said many times, I like to Clico as much as I can. Um, whenever I have parts that have been match drilled and there's uh, times when you have to disassemble and reassemble multiple times, whenever I do the reassembly, I use as many Clicos as I can just to be sure that everything as, is as exact as it can be to the way that it was before it was disassembled. So I've got all my Clicos in. I've got the nut plate back in. I've got it Clicoed to the rib. Uh, this is the hole that we just drilled. So it's now Clicoed to the rib and it's also held in place with the bolt. So it's, it's retained in two locations and the bracket is fully Clicoed to the rib. So now, just like before, this hole is now through this rib. So this will now leave an indication on this part because we drilled both of these holes through the rib. So now I'm going through the nut plate, through the rib, and I'm going to leave that mark on the back side of this bracket. And once I do that, it will be the same process as before. I'll disassemble everything and I'll go ahead and drill the hole through that thick plate on the drill press. I'm giving this a, a good amount of turns here because it was a little hard getting started. Now it's turning freely. So that's it. So now that mark is on the back side of this heavy bracket. Take everything apart, drill it on the drill press, come back, put it together and then match drill the nut plate, the uh, rib, and this bracket as an assembly. All right, once again, we're back. And now, this plate has been drilled. And again, I've got everything clicoed back together. I've got the nut plate back in place, and I've got the clicos in. So now I'm just going to run my screw in here just to be sure that it fits and nothing between this plate and this plate has shifted or the nut plate has shifted in such a way that this won't go in. And you can see it goes in very nice right into the nut plate just like before. So I know that everything is in alignment now. 
So that's that. That's how I do it. That's my process for the majority of the airplane when I have to uh, match drill things and disassemble and reassemble and that kind of stuff. It's a little tedious, but um, it really does ensure perfection or very close to it. Another thing I wanted to point out is, uh, if you recall, this bracket is bent. It's got a bend on it here. When you mark your hole location, you're marking on uh, this side of the bracket. So when you lay the bracket on your drill press table to drill this hole, make sure that this bend is hanging off of the edge because you want this flat surface here to be flat on your drill press when you drill the hole. If you have the whole piece laying on your drill press, it's going to have a little bit of a hump to it because of the bend. So just make sure you've got the bend off the table so this is nice and flat. And the other thing that I wanted to mention real quick in the video showing me drilling, you may have noticed I didn't have any gloves on. 99% of the time I wear gloves around the drill press because if you're holding on to a part, something were to catch and it were to swing, that's going to waste no time cutting your hand or cutting your finger. So uh, I like to wear gloves. I just didn't in that last clip, but uh, I would recommend doing so. All right, that's it for the lecture. That's it for this part. I'm going to do some countersinking in here as required and uh, start deburring all my parts so I can get this thing riveted together.